Nation's College of Education. We welcome you, dear friends. The future belongs to those who live in the beauty of Athens. At last, I extend my hearty welcome to my fellow student teachers who are the glittering stars of this program. I welcome you, dear friends. I welcome you all. Thank you. Leadership is not about being in charge. It is about taking care of those in your charge, said by Simon Sinek. Our principal, Reverend Sister Dr. Vasanti Madonna, is a good leader who takes up responsibility and care for the well-being and development of the institution. At this juncture, I am delighted to invite our principal to give the inaugural address. Please, Sister. Dear and Reverend Dr. Stephen Jair, Professor of Philosophy, Nyanati Park Institute of Philosophical and Theological Studies, Pune, the resource person of the day. Reverend Dr. Henry Jerome, Director and Cyber Criminologist, Sexavis, Professor of Psychology. Dr. Marie Prema, Emma Coordinator and Assistant Professor of Education. And my dear faculty members from SICA and XSCE and my dear students of both Emmer and Beard from St. Xavier's College of Education and St. Ignatius College of Education. I am glad to greet you all a happy morning. I am truly honored to stand before you today as we gather for the National Artificial Intelligence is a field that has witnessed unprecedented growth and impact in recent years. It has the potential to expose us to consider the implications, challenges, and opportunities artificial intelligence brings to the forefront of pedagogy and educational practices. It's an inquiry that beckons us to reflect on how we, as educators and students, can navigate this complex landscape. Artificial intelligence has emerged as a powerful tool that is reshaping the way we teach and learn. It offers a world of possible. It's, a, it's essential that we understand the delicate between, balance between the intelligence of artificial intelligence and the authenticity of human teaching. For the prospective teachers, this topic is particularly relevant as you rich. And you know, the uh, other day, my son and we were talking about this artificial intelligence. And then, and then he says, uh, And suddenly, now, now they are uh, now, uh, I think this now, now the Elon Musk is now trying to gather some 10 people to go to moon. ஆரம்பிக்கிறார் <laughs> So that is the big tension that we have because in terms of you know in terms of growth of this technology from internet to internet of things for example now it is not going to stop with the internet of things we are now moving on to metaverse metaverse is another universe by itself metaverse is a universe by itself and the my dear uh, my dear uh, friends it is going to be a big tension in the future the good news okay the good news is we are yet to experience the full artificial experience. That's what we are doing now. We are in a transition society. Whether your sons and sons, sons and sons probably would have complete artificial intelligence where there will be separate ethics, where there will be separate uh, lifestyle, where there will be completely different humanity uh, together. So deeper confusions may come in the future. Now a warning. The warning is, unless we intelligently grapple with this reality, the humanity will be devoured by this reality. Not that the humanity will, will be erased. No, it won't be. Humanity will not be erased. 
but the, the value system will change. You know, that's one reason why Industrial Revolution 5 has changed its motto. It now speaks about sustainability of values, not sustainability of anything else, of values. Now, you know, the value system that what we have is totally different from what you people have. And I'm sure that your brothers will have a certain value system. And that is the place we have intelligently grappled with this DRK and therefore it will have a very serious impact on the educational system. They even speak about reinforcement learning, deep learning, machine learning. All these things now will be part of your, your students. You have to be ready for that. What is reinforcement theorem? Reinforcement learning. That is by trial and error. So you want to give more trial and error for the, for the students. You cannot something like that, you know, chocolate and power will not get up in future. It is going to be healthy in the, in the future. And therefore, my dear students, you know, uh, there is an uh, effect for dunning Kruger effect that was uh, given in 1999. dunning to Kruger effect. David Dunning and Justin Kruger, they, they uh, uh, plot that effect. You know, what is that effect? Those people with little limited language will be overconfident in talking, like me, now what I'm doing, without even knowing about artificial intelligence, and overestimate their competence to discuss. All of us will be talking. Because now most of us started believing in our WhatsApp and the you know, social network messages, which need very serious scrutiny. Part of education has to talk about this learning with scrutiny and that is where I am sure that it will have a very serious impact and artificial intelligence will not be an artificial one, certainly it will be a reality of the rest of this. Thank you Father for sharing your valuable insights about artificial intelligence. It's both a privilege and an honor to introduce our distinguished resource person for today's session. To take up the task, I cordially invite Ms. Maina Joshi, the student teacher, to introduce the resource person. Success is not about the resources. It's all about the resourcefulness that ultimately makes the difference. Very warm greetings to everyone gathered here. It is with great pleasure I introduce today's resource person, Reverend Dr. Stephen J. R. Susanavan, who is an eminent personality and a spiritual leader. He belongs to the Catholic Diocese of Tirupati, Tamil Nadu. He is a professor, Faculty of Philosophy, Nyanadipa Institute of Philosophy and Theology, Pune, since June 2008. He is the director of Nyanadipa Center for Science and Religion Studies. Head Department of Cosmology, Coordinator of the Master's Program in the Interfacing of Science, Philosophy and Religion, a co-leader at Papal Seminary, Pune. His doctoral research was undertaken at Wake Forest University, USA, and his Inter-University Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics, India. He was awarded the Junior Research Fellowship by the Indian Council for Philosophical Research in the year 2004, and a merit scholarship for PhD at the Central University in Hyderabad. He obtained PhD in Philosophy of Science at the Central University Hyderabad in the year 2009. He undertook the postdoctoral research at Lonergan Research Institute at Washington DC, Boston, USA and at the University of Toronto, Canada. He obtained an award in the International Essay Competition for Faculties conducted by John Carroll University USA and evaluated by E.R. Ramsey Institute of Oxford University and University of Lyme in Jan 2016, sponsored by the Templeton Foundation. He was promoted to professorship by the Congregation of Catholic Education of Vatican in July 2016. He was a member in the Service Review Committee at the University of Jaffna, Sri Lanka in the year 2020. He served as a panel member for the Center for Quality Assurance for the Promotion of the Lecturers at the University of Jaffna, Sri Lanka in May 2022. He has published 12 books including Towards the Theory of Rationality in Science, A Plea for Reasonableness in the year 2012, 
A book that cannot be titled in the year 2015, a book seeking its author in the year 2021, a book that is not the year 2022, may read for modern times revised edition in the year 2022, can we ever know how much we don't know in the year 2023? In addition to this, he has presented and published several research papers in the national and international conferences and journals. He has been a visiting faculty at Southern University, Seoul, South Korea, International Institute of Information Technology, Hyderabad, and the Symbolosis Liberal School of Arts, Pune. He is a visiting faculty at several institutes of higher education in India and University of Jaffna, Sri Lanka. For two years, he served as a parish pastor in the Diocese of Tilshravali, India. He conducts seminars, motivating sessions for teachers, students and parents at schools and colleges. He preaches recollections and retreats for the lady, priest and religious. We are truly blessed to have such an illustrious personality as our resource person. Therefore, I humbly request Dr. Therefore, I humbly request our Reverend Sister Principal to honor the resource person with a manager. Thank you, Sister, and thank you, Father. Thank you, Ms. Fine and Soshi, for sharing the glimpse of his achievements. Reverend Dr. Stephen J. Abdul Adil is known for his breadth of knowledge, excess to experience, and invaluable contributions to the society. He has not only mastered the intricacies of his domain, but has also demonstrated an unwavering commitment in sharing his knowledge with others. On this beautiful morning, I extend a genial welcome and invite the esteemed resource person to take up the stage. Please, Father. Dear Father, in this room, the director of the yes. Published uh, education and uh, seminar that was for the English's and their professors and student friends. Good morning, everybody. I'm very happy to be here this morning, but I do not know whether you are happy that I'm here. That you can decide after my lecture. I am happy for more than one reason. First of all, to meet you all and to interact with you and again to share the same stage with my classmate but in the Jerome in Puna philosophy we were all sitting like you so nice and uh, very obedient students and uh, nice to be with him here and Samara also a contemporary studying during the same time in Puna the same year of the college and also my father he did his year just recently in 1954 when the Senseiris College of uh, Education began and yesterday Sister Madonna took me to the campus and very interestingly they have kept all the photographs of the alumni, of the students. The sense of history is very important and very happy to see my father's uh, photo there and I have taken in my uh, mobile and uh, unfortunately my father is not here, he must be watching from heaven and he is able to pass away, he is back to home and return on home. Uh, so I am not able to send the WhatsApp. Maybe artificial intelligence will make us a provision to send the photos to heaven also in the future. If it is, I will do it. And uh, usually I talk to students in the classes. Sometimes I conduct seminars for the teachers. But today something different and special. I am talking to student teachers. Right? And the invitation card, they put interaction by so on so student teacher, so on so student teacher. Since you all uh, identify yourselves as student teachers, I am happy to identify myself as teacher student. Because when you become a real teacher, you realize that we are all students still here. And uh, so, with these few words, 
I'd like to begin by sharing. Um, this also gave <coughs> in the introduction a general view of artificial intelligence and for energy. Beautifully presented uh, various aspects of uh, artificial intelligence in a nutshell uh, about the fact and fear, anxiety, caution, and so on. And you may be wondering what is there more to talk in the artificial intelligence topic, right? And my topic is artificial intelligence. Uh, it is intelligent, true, but it is still artificial. And uh, Father, towards the end, he made one statement we need to use our intelligence to use this intelligence, artificial intelligence, intelligently, which means there is an implication the natural intelligence always has a little uh, upper hand over artificial intelligence because it is this natural intelligence which creates artificial intelligence and there are lots of philosophical aspects behind it, philosophical discussions and so on we are not going to deal with everything that we need to be artificial intelligence, okay? because artificial intelligence may be more fast, faster than us and uh, capable, but still artificial is artificial. So I'll take only from one uh, little aspect and discuss with you all. And uh, shall I come down? You can put up this panel also. Since the screen is shaking, you should not let the intelligence be shaking. Right. So it will be easy for you, it's not shaking. So this is up now. Idea of AI, it was there even centuries ago, you may be surprised to know that. Greek ancient literature mythology spoke about the inanimate things becoming intelligent. So several centuries ago, they imagined, speculated. A story written 75 years ago, a mega supercomputer was designed, collecting all the materials data available in our Milky Way galaxy, other galaxies, Right? Everywhere, all possible data are collected and that supercomputer was made. And uh, anybody can put any question to that supercomputer. And finally, the chief engineer of that computer was given the privilege. And uh, they asked him to make a question, to put a question to the computer. And he asked, is there a God? And the supercomputer searched, searched all its data, all available information everywhere above the sun, below the sun, inside the sun, all the galaxies and finally it says yes, from now on. Is there a God? Yes, from now on. What is the implication? The supercomputer says that I am going to be a God. That is the implication. And that was 70 years ago, a story. Now, super supercomputer, we have got the rich quantum computer, quantum computation. What is that? We will see in the course of time. So today it becomes true as we build machines, neural network, resembling human brains, neural network. So we have many reasons to see, to show how this artificial neural network resemble, behaves as natural, intelligent or natural uh, brain. Some of the apps and technologies using AI, I and mean, you answers, you are more aware of more of such technologies and apps. Chat GPT, Chat Generative Pre Trained Transformer, OpenAI, Chatbot, and many apps and software programs using AI like uh, LIDAR, Face App, Face App, Swift Key, Keyboard, Replica, and plenty of other. Easy to access, you know, Clara, Actors, Makers, Flow, Pipe. There are there's a dozens of such apps which use all this uh, artificial intelligence. AI yeah, is astoundingly incredible. Mr. Uh, uh, also mentioned some of the aspects to show how they are really incredible uh, uh, achievement. And there are generally two types of AI: weak AI, also known as narrow AI, able to recognize faces or voices, self-drive a car, create chess, solve equations, check emails, proofread our text, autocorrect. 
spell check, manipulate calculators and cell phones, or even to pilot spacecrafts, perform delicate surgeries, solve massive equations. All these things are amazing, but they are said to be weak. Then we are made to wonder what about the strong AI? If these other things are supposed to be a weak AI, and auto correct, um, you know, when we type email also, there will be pop up spelling, right? Uh, we need to be very careful, you see, because, uh, yeah, I can say that, student teachers, no? Once a friend uh, received an email from a particular fellow, and he says, I'm very sorry, I've been using your wife all these uh, months. Now I realize it's really, really morally wrong. I'm extremely sorry. And especially when you are not there, it was easy for me to use your wife. I'm very sorry, you're not going to do. And the man got furious, naturally, you know. He went home and he's angry, just got the wife. And then they opened the laptop to take the email. There was another email from the same friend. My friend, I'm very sorry, not your wife, I was using your Wi Fi. Okay? When he was typing Y, W, I, F, the computer said wife. He didn't check that. So he put wife. But actually, what he wanted to say is he was using a Wi Fi. So there can be serious, serious problems in life if we are not careful with this auto prompting of the computers. So, whatever the artificial intelligence may be, but behind that, there must be natural intelligence to to monitor, to rectify, and so on. And uh, strong AI, artificial general intelligence, AGI, can understand or learn as humans do, our perceptions, beliefs, process cognitive ca capacities to learn, perceive, process language, and to do exactly what a human mind or intelligence can do. At this point, we have not achieved 100%, but we are moving towards, as Varendi also uh, mentioned. We are all, all already started moving towards that where we can really have the artificial intelligence which can surpass human intelligence in many ways in terms of volume, in terms of speed, in terms of uh, ability and so on. And these are some examples to show. IBM Deep Thunder, weather prediction in a region to the precision of one third of a kilometer. From St. Ignatius and St. Savings, about one third of a kilometer. What will be the weather here? What will be the weather there? You can predict so minutely, so precisely. And Smart Assistant Alexa on the Amazon's Echo 2015, now compatible with 20,000 devices with the ability to perform 50,000 skills. Apple's virtual assistants and Siri can create required facial expressions for the movies. Human sounding voices used in the Google Duplex, AI based booking appointments, and Stitch, Stitch Fix creates new styles of clothes for us. So all these things artificial intelligence can do now. And today AI is everywhere, as we all know. It is in the field of games and astronomy, healthcare, transportation, agriculture, education, economics, e-commerce, entertainment, robotics, automo automobiles, automotive, social media, data security, finance, everywhere. You cannot think of any field where this AI has not stepped in, and that is the situation we are in now. Technology is something not only our knowledge, but also our relationships, values, and attitudes. For example, a girl writing to her dad. Dear dad, I am in love with a boy who is far away from me. I am in India and he lives in Alaska. No problem. We met on a dating website, became friends on Facebook, had long chats on LinkedIn. He proposed me to me on Skype, and now we have had two months of relationship through Viper. I will arrange a meeting on Zoom for you to interact with him. I need your blessings and good wishes, the daddy, send them by WhatsApp. Dad replies, wow, really? Then get married on Twitter, have fun on Tango, buy your things on eBay, receive them through email, Gmail, and more importantly, if you are fed up with your husband, send him on Amazon.com. Hope I'm not being some clues for you, girls and boys here. Okay, so all this is possible. You know, key components in AI, machine learning, deep learning, Neural network, natural language processing, computer vision, cognitive computing, all these things make the artificial intelligence from the weak level to the uh, strong uh, level. Amazing growth of AI. Uh, normally, when a particular technology is introduced, it takes time to reach 1 million users, right? For example, telephone took 75 years to reach 1 million users in the world, mobile phone took 16 years. Netflix took 10 years, Twitter 6 years, Gmail 5 years, 
Facebook 4 years, Instagram 2.5 years, TikTok just 9 months and ChatGPT only, only 2 months and it has reached 1 million users worldwide. And that shows the uh, speed with which AI is uh, developing. Hope it does not happen by 20, 2500 AD. We are looking for someone with your exact qualifications but a mechanical version. So there is not be any special merit by studying sense services and integrations. They will be looking for a mechanical version, not actual version. We have discussed from various angles. Can a machine act intelligently? Can it solve any problem as a human person would do by thinking? Can it think? Are human intelligence and artificial intelligence in a machine the same? We use the word, is it in a uh, equivocal way or uh, uh, univocal way or an analogical way. There's a lot of philosophical and linguistic aspects behind it. Though we use the word intelligence, is it really the intelligence that we are speaking about or we are experiencing in our uh, system, in our brain, perhaps? And is the human brain essentially a computer? It performs like a computer, but can we reduce our human brain to a computer? If that is the case, we can reduce a computer to brain. Is it possible? Is computing ability alone enough to make a machine to be like human brain? If a machine is able to do the computation, can we call it as a brain? Our brain is doing computation, but is a computation alone enough to call a machine brain? Can a machine have a mind or mental states? Can it be conscious in the same sense that a human being is? Can it feel how things are? AI may imitate some conscious behaviors of human beings, but does it mean that it is human? What would be the serious impacts of AI on the fabrics of society? What would be the deep ethical concerns involved in the AI technologies? Sister also mentioned about the legal problem, about the social problem behind the AI. How far AI assisted human enhancement due to a cognition can be allowed? Today we can design our game. You know, in China they made 3,000 artificial wounds no? to grow the uh, fertilized womb there. Instead of the child growing the uh, fetus growing in the mother's womb, the child goes there and there are cameras to record the performance. The parents can sit at home and watch the fetus developing. At the 7th month, 8th month, they can talk to the baby, the baby can react. So the baby becomes familiar with the voice of the mother or father. You know, that's the case now, now also. 7th or 8th month, the fetus is able to hear, listen to the mother's voice. That's what uh, we have discovered. That's why the child is very familiar after birth with the mother's voice because mother is already voice is reaching her in the, the system through the uh, fetus. That's why the mother, even if she is not a big fetus, uh, when she sings, the child is comforted, right? Because the child knows beyond this, my mother cannot sing, so let me sleep. I cannot expect more than that. So the mother, the child is familiar with the mother's voice. Suppose if the father says, re, 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 the child will say, please keep what I want to sleep. Because the father's voice will be something strange to the child. Whereas in the artificial womb now, the uh, child can grow with the familiarity with the father's and mother's voice. <clears throat> what are the laws and regulations for developing and implementing AI technologies? So these are all several, several aspects to this knowledge intelligence. My dear friends, by the way, are you all following me? Yes. Is my pronunciation okay or British or American English? Is it okay? Because pronunciation is very important. Not only for the teachers and students, even when you pray to God also, pronunciation is very important. Why? Otherwise, God will misunderstand your prayer. As simple as that. Once the saying was praying to God, and God sent an angel by answering the prayer. You know how? Immediately he sent an angel to the razor. Razor, no? The angel came like that. Why? Because the saying was praying, Oh God, please shave me, please shave me. Alright. The main argument of this presentation. Oh my god, now only are coming to the main point. All these points are only sub points. Okay. Let us focus on the linguistic aspects involved in AI. Say there are consciousness studies, legal aspects, emotional aspects, all those things. But I want to take these linguistic aspects with you all my students, uh, friends. Because linguistic aspects more related to your training, the educational field, right? And that's why I wanted to focus on this particular uh, aspect. Language is one of the manifestations of intelligence, correct? Language is one of the manifestations of intelligence. If AI is intelligent, it has a language, obviously. 
And if it has a language, it has a community with us. But languages, natural, technical, always have serious problems. Yes or no? If my language does not reach you, serious problem, right? And what you say does not reach me, serious problem. See, if ordinary languages with which we are familiar for decades and centuries, all over the world, different places at different times, if ordinary languages have problems, the technical languages also will have problems. And therefore, we need to pay attention to the language used by AI, language used for AI. Since as you know, I am from philosophy background, the philosophy of language gives some insights, the linguistic studies. That's why I wanted to look at this one from this particular uh, angle. If we claim that AI is also conscious and human, we need to converse with it, dialogue with it. If so, what is the type of language that AI is using? Can we both mutually understand? Uh, mutually understand? Will there be any communication gap? If there are serious and life threatening problems arise, who will take responsibility? You may say, sorry, it's a mission problem. Because some years ago, in Pune University, when the result uh, was announced in BS physics, a girl did not see her name in the passing list, not the name, and she was so desperate she ended her life, didn't even go home. She committed suicide. And uh, the parents were deeply worried because the uh, child, the girl has been very successful throughout her career. She has got many awards and rewards, etc. That's why she could not uh, stand or uh, she could not stand the failure. And of course, she could not come home also and she went to commit suicide. The most painful thing, after 10 days, the university sent the uh, math list and she has passed the first class. And when they asked the university, they said, very sorry, some uh, missionary. Now, in this case, that is a case several years ago happened. Now, with AI technology is coming more and more, more forcefully, more uh, you know, prominently in our lives. If there is some need, communication gap, who will take the responsibility? And that's a, a crucial question. In fact, there, that girl, you should not blame the girl alone, you should blame the parents also. Because the parents have created a space for the girl to come and share their failures and disappointments, struggles also. The parents have been very happy when she was successful, but they must have made it clear to her if you are, you are our girl, we are loving you, not only when you are successful, even when you happen to fail, struggle, come and share with us. We are there for you. That kind of uh, assurance the parents are going to give, and anyway, that's the situation we live in. And father was saying how how this AI technology has really uh, damaged our thinking. Some one or two months ago, in our Tamil Nadu, a uh, fellow, girl standard boy, committed suicide boy because his father told him that it happened. Right? Another fellow, standard standard boy, committed suicide because he was trying to take uh, take the help gene, but to grow taller, he did not grow tall enough. And again, the ethics behind the advertisement technology. So it's a very, very crucial uh, issue of their behind. So if there is a communication problem, who will take responsibility? And we all know communication at all levels is very important. Uh, communication causes serious issues in our daily lives with pet animals, with friends, with teachers and students, with the spouses. Uh, can you guess what is the conversation? Yeah. Wife in a desperate mood. Oh, once again, I have misplaced my car key. Husband, he is in your jeans. Why do you place an anger? Why did you bring my family in here unnecessarily? Got it? I think you are wearing sarees, you cannot understand because he speaks about jeans. You know? The husband says it in a jeans, jeans pants. But she obviously misunderstood it's the jeans in the body, you know? Promosal jeans. And why do you bring in unnecessarily my family in here? See, communication gap? Yes. If this can happen with the, the wife, husband, friends with whom we live, we talk for years, you know, together, what about the mission? There can be 101 reasons for communication gap and misunderstanding. Five parts of this presentation. First, major and scope of ordinary languages, a basic analysis, difficulties and challenges with the usage of languages in science, for the, just uh, hinted upon mathematics, language, languages used in AI, and inherent difficulties and possible dangers with AI languages, and finally challenges with the AI digital learning. Because you are all uh, involved with the issue of education, and becoming a good teacher, and you are going to train the future generation. It is good to know some of the challenges that are found uh, with AI and digital learning. 
A brief analysis of language in general. Some of these points must uh, come up to us in the linguistic studies or literature studies. It may be overlapping as just a reminder. One of the essential and undeniable features of intelligence is developing and communicating through a language, as I said. Language not only communicates but also constitutes concepts. It's very, very important. Human language is the tool to communicate between two things. Otherwise, what else we have the best communication medium? Of course, through gestures we can do that, but the gestures cannot uh, achieve everything. So, language written or oral becomes the best tool to communicate between the two brains and with God and nature, because we believe And uh, language not only communicates but constitutes concepts, it creates concepts. Language, for example, uh, snow, what's the color of the snow? You may not get snow in a colorful uh, way. If there's a snow, it will be white. We will say white is snow, but Eskimos have 21 names to describe the layer and the degree of the whiteness of the snow. We may say dark white or light white or medium white at the most. But they have 21 names for to describe the whiteness. Why? Because the language is enabling them to create the concepts. So language is not just for communication, language constitutes concepts in a way. Language basically is a series of codes consisting of words and rules which are used for communication. Analytical philosophy is a recent uh, uh, popular branch in the uh, philosophy which is interested in uh, language studies. Law says words are only vehicles to communicate ideas and the ideas have independent existence. These are all great beauty. Suppose we say beauty, beauty is there and is expressed in some trees or plants and we communicate. So ideas always exist independent of our words of communication. But Frege challenged this idea. The thought of a sentence or the meaning of a sentence depends on its structure or syntax. It must be known in the way of class. Thoughts are determined by the logical inferences that the sentence allows. You can get the meaning only to the extent the sentence allows you to get the meaning. You cannot go beyond that. Alright? So, <clears throat> three major components of language as we know the form of language, the content of a language, use of language. The form includes three sub constituents syntax, morphology, and phonology. You may be aware of all these uh, divisions. Syntax, for example, gives the rules for the structure of sentence. And if the order is changed, it does not make any sense. For example, I bought an apple, we understand. But a uh, bought he apple, or an bought I apple, when the sentence is uh, changed, this order, we don't get the meaning. So the meaning is allowed by the structure of the sentence. So it's not just uh, it is there and language only communicates. And morphology deals with the structure of words. The first one is uh, structure of uh, sentence, and the second one is structure of words. Morphemes, the smallest in uh, utterances with meaning. There are free morphemes and bound morphemes. Words standing alone with meaning and bound morphemes, prefixes or suffixes. Yes. And again, phonology, dealing with the sound of syllables or words, how they are pronounced. That's why you mentioned about pronunciation, you see. Sound depends on the following letter, whether it's a vowel or consonant. Depending on whether, whether it's used as a verb or an adjective. Blessed woman and blessed woman, you all know. And the infants can make all types of sound and noise to learn any language. So after the age of five, it's very difficult to produce other sounds and, and the child learns only the sounds used in the mother tongue. When the child is born, the child can make any number of noise, a different types of uh, noise and sounds, etc. But slowly the parents teach her their language, the mother tongue, and the child gets stuck only to those uh, sounds those morphemes, those pronunciations which are useful for that mother tongue. That's why for the South Indian to learn the uh, North Indian language, the nuances of the pronunciation, similarly vice versa, it's very difficult because as a child we are not used to listen to those kind of uh, noises or the sounds. And after age of five, it's very difficult for the child to produce the new sounds, noise which the child is not familiar with. Semantics, how words are related to one another in a given language, here you have synonyms, antonyms, homophones, denotation and connotation. Homophones means same sound but different meaning. Wood. Right? If you make it a sentence, you understand the meaning of wood. Otherwise, you'll ask it is W O E L D or W O O D. And similarly, denotation, literal and implied meaning of the word thou. Thou, the word, and thou is a person who is very serene and calm as you are sitting now. I don't know what you're thinking about, but you are very calm and serene and happy. Now, one uh, friend said, uh, uh, my wife is an angel, right? 
and the other two friends said, Oh my god, my wife is still alive. Alright. So the age of he meant means very nice and cordial and loving and so on. So denotation. Connotation, using a word not in the literal sense, she is the same pair of her class. We know the connotation. And also two unrelated semantic domains can be brought together, she is an angel, I said. And similarly, several theories of meaning deserve a philosophical background. There are plenty of theories of meaning. How a word gets a meaning, ideation theory of meaning, truth condition theory of meaning, picture theory of meaning, the interferentialist theory of meaning, the direct reference theory of meaning, the semantic externalist theory of meaning, the verificationist and falsificationist theory, the pragmatic theories, the psychological theories of meaning, and finally the use theory of meaning. So these are all uh, different theories. Now I am highlighting these things to show how the ordinary language itself is full of problem. And there are different ways of uh, understanding this theory. And for example, Wittgenstein says use theory of meaning. And early Wittgenstein and later Wittgenstein is saying that earlier he thought language as pictures reality. It's called the picture theory of reality. Later uh, he changed uh, language is actually used for many ways, many things. Therefore, the meaning is in the use. When I say the word tiger, it depends how I use it. Suppose I am going with my friend in a zoo, right, walking around, and I say, hey, I see a tiger. Now I am inviting my friend to look at the cage and enjoy or appreciate the tiger, or make the tiger. Supposing I am walking with my friend in a forest, I say tiger. There I am not inviting the friend to make the tiger, and he will not be there to further admiration, right? I am asking him to run away. I am cautioning him. So the word tiger gets its meaning from the context. As we are using different tools in the toolbox, the screwdriver can be used for many things, right? And to, uh, uh, so many things can be used. Similarly, a word is a language is a toolbox, and all these words are tools, and we can use the words for different purposes as a tool. So there is no fixed meaning attached to any word. It is we who attach the meaning to the word. That's what this meaning is in use. Later, John Austin developed the ordinary language philosophy and they developed the speech act theory. Speech act theory. And suppose I am saying that coffee is hot. Is the meaning clear? Yeah, it will be clear depending on the uh, context. So when I say that coffee is hot, it can just be a report, right? Coffee is hot. Or it can be a caution not to burn lips. Suppose someone is drinking coffee, hey, coffee is hot. That means I am cautioning you, don't burn your lips. Or it can be a sarcastic remark. How do you like my coffee and omelet? Yeah, coffee is hot, meaning omelet is cold. Right? So the word, the sentence coffee is hot can have a number of meanings depending upon the context. Therefore, it all depends on the context and the intentions of the speaker. Contemporary researchers uh, uh, focus on the context sensitivity in epistemology, in metaethics, etc. Thus, ordinary language having lots of problems and technical languages will have technical problems. Let's move on to highlight some of the obvious difficulties in the languages used in mathematics and natural sciences. Now, we may be thinking only the ordinary languages we have problems, but in the languages used in mathematics and science, this is not a problem, that's not the case. For example, scientists are increasingly becoming aware of the enigma in relating matter and meaning at various levels. As linguists, as students of literature or the experts in literature struggle to match the words and the meaning, science is also struggle. Very often we think science is objective, science is rational, science is methodological, everything is clear, everything is accurate, perfect in science. Sorry, it is not the case. One of the examples. In considering a concept, in designing and executing a written experiment, in interpreting the results, in all these things, there is a big struggle how to relate and the meaning. Very importantly, how to interpret. When the science does a, perform an experiment, the results come in different forms, isn't it? The results can be like a graph, ECG machine, or it can be just a graph, uh, or, or plastic uh, black and white like X-ray sheet, or it can be a pointer reading, or it can be just a digital um, representation 3.71 or 4.82 like that. But all these things have to be interpreted. Otherwise, it's only a finger, it's only a drawing, it's only a map. So, interpretation is very important. And to interpret the results, one's expertise, knowledge, experience, wisdom, courage, value system, beliefs, convictions, all this is played in an important role. So, that is why science is not just a purely rational enterprise, but it's a reasonable enterprise. 
You know, once a scientist was uh, experimenting with a frog, he kept the frog on the table, and how many legs the frog has? In Palayamuthi also, only four, right? So he kept the frog on the uh, table, then he drank some water. He got one leg and said, jump. The frog was trying to move with the three legs. And then he noted, he, uh, noted down his observation. And he kept the second leg also and said, jump. Now the two legs, the frog was just taking. And then he kept the third leg also and said, jump. Now only one leg, right? It is just moving slightly, trying to move. And he cut the fourth leg and said jump, absolutely no movement, because no leg was like that. And then he wrote down all the observations, he thought for a while, and finally the conclusion of the experiment. When a frog loses all its four legs, it loses its power of hearing. Are you hearing? So far he has been thinking, the frog was moving because he was saying jump, jump, jump. Now no jump because the frog is not able to hear what he said. And uh, those people who heard me laugh, all right. So coming back, uh, difficulties in the field of mathematics. Mathematics, many may be experts including a principal. Mathematics said to be handmade of science. Then they thought it's the queen of science. Now they realize it constitutes science. Mathematics makes science possible. For example, Newton's calculus, uh, he needed this calculus to explain his theory of gravity. Without this calculus tool, mathematical tool, the gravity theory would not be uh, understandable, accessible to others. Einstein used the richest tensor calculus to explain his relativity theory. And otherwise, without this calculus mathematical tool, the theory of relativity would not have been uh, understandable, accessible to us. So it is as though mathematics creates, constitutes reality. And Einstein is really an admirer of Indians. You know why? Because Indians really gave the concept of zero. I just imagine today what science would be possible without the concept of zero. You cannot even count beyond nine. When you say ten, it already involves one zero. That's why Einstein appreciates the Indians. And once he said, I think, if I were given a chance in my next birth, I would like to be born as an Indian. Okay? That we need to lift up your fathers, at least those who have, you see. And uh, that is why our Indian students, we, we don't mind getting zero in our exam. After it's our contribution to the world. Why should I feel bad about it? Right? Good, I'm not encouraging that. Okay. Galileo, you know, this is written in a mathematical language. Without maths, it is impossible to comprehend a single word of the universe. So, no maths, no understanding of the universe. John Pokemon, mathematics proves to be the key to unlock the secrets of the universe. Secrets, plenty of secrets in the universe within mathematics. John Barrow, mathematics is a language that possesses built in language which is unexpectedly attuned to the logic of reality. That's why Einstein is also one thing. What is the connection between my mind and the reality out there? All that I am is able to just think or some reflections, the uh, uh, light waves come and fall on the retina. There is no other connection. I am just wondering why and how I am able to comprehend the universe. That's why he says, it is incomprehensible to see why the world is comprehensible to me. And Jan Donald, there is another author, his book is, is God a mathematician? He is asking. Because only a mathematician God can create a beautiful universe. Zillions and zillions of galaxies and planets and everything going around in its own uh, place, etc. So mathematics is very appreciated. And Frege is a philosopher. He says a philosopher who has nothing to do with geometry is only a half philosopher. A mathematician with no element of philosophy in him is only a half mathematician. So philosophy and mathematics goes hand in hand. Now the point is, but such essential mathematics unfortunately struggles to capture the reality. Neither ordinary language nor technical language seems to be capable in capturing the intricacies of reality. That is why it uses imaginary numbers, irrational numbers, fuzzy logic, and so on, whose values cannot be accurately determined. For example, the value of pi, 3.14. In which uh, formula we use in mathematics? Pi r square. What's pi r square for? Of course, student teachers will say that. And 2 pi r? Circumference, uh, right? Now you must have written in your earlier classes the value for pi 3.14 and got the full marks, 10 marks, right? But if you are really honest student, you should have told the teacher, teacher is only an approximate answer because the value of pi do not know. The 3.14 is only approximate value, so please reduce the mark. Will you say? You didn't say. Don't ask the students also later in future to do that because we all agree that 3.14. But the actual value of pi, nobody knows. Why? 
A Swiss university recently has calculated the digits of pi with the help of a supercomputer up to 62.8 trillion digits. And there is no systematic repetition of the series also. It's just at random. It goes on 3.14. Going how many? 62.8 trillion digits are coming after 3 point. How many zeros are 1 trillion? If it's an Ignatius, we don't fight. And especially when Zen Xavier students come to Ignatius, we surely don't, don't fight. How many zeros are 1 trillion? 12 zeros. Easy to remember, trillion T, 12 T. So 12 zeros, trillion. So 62 all of 5, 8 and 12 zeros, trillion time. The digits goes till it is incomplete. How many zeros are 1 billion? Many zeros. Okay? Yeah, many zeros. I always give proof to the students. 1 billion has 9 zeros. How to remember? B, small b, we write like this. Put, put the becomes 9. So this is called association of thoughts. Right? And in fact, my father told me, he was also a master in the uh, high secondary school. Association of thoughts from the known thing, we move on to the unknown things. That's the way the science also moves, right? From the known theories, we move on to the unknown theories. We, the teacher students, better to remember such things so that we can help our students also. What's the spelling for stationary? S T A T I O N. A R Y. Or E R Y. Two hours in A. Okay, 11, 12, 13. Two hours in E. Nobody. Of course, there are two words, right? Stationary, E R Y, E R Y. Both are correct. <laughs> because today, modern generations can say any spelling for anything. Both are right. Stationary A refers to something standing, they were moving. Stationary E refers to the shop where they sell the pen and pencil. So, pen, what is spelling? E. E. Stationary, there is E. This E goes there. So, it's a stationary shop where they sell pen. Of course, you must know the spelling for pen. If you write the pen as a pan, I can understand. Alright. So, this is from known B to the unknown. Stationary shop with E, then not with E. Okay, it's not. Uh, connected with artificial intelligence. Okay. We'll come back. Linguistic challenges in physics and cosmology. Again, the universe is beyond our comprehension. Aristotle, Euclid, Newton, everybody had a different uh, concepts. Aristotle said the world is one dimensional, Euclid two dimensional, Newton three dimensional, Einstein world of physics four dimensional, and present consciousness is also included as a fifth dimension, and current suggestion is there are 21 dimensions in the universe. And we have access only three plus one dimensions. Other dimensions are not accessible to us. If they were accessible to us, for us, we would be able to see God taking a walk, or God attending a lecture, or giving a lecture. Right? Since those uh, dimensions are not accessible to us, and we do not know. Similarly, in the world, we know the, the you know so many things are there. You know, dark matter, dark energy, intergalactic gases, trillions of galaxies. Here, as the diagram shows. This stars and intergalactic galaxies make for only 4 percentage. The remaining thing in terms of dark matter and dark energy. Now what is this dark matter and dark energy? They do not know. Because they don't have any other language to describe it, they say dark matter and dark energy. It's not describing the reality. It's only trying to say what it is. Similarly, struggles for language at the subatomic uh, level. You know, at the subatomic level, we have uh, nucleus, within nucleus, protons and neutrons and electrons going around. And protons made up of quarks, we know. Now they uh, estimate about 120 particles in the nucleus. A proton is having many quarks. You know how that word quark came? Quark, a nonsense word used by James Joyce in the one particular novel. So the scientists take the nonsense word from a novel to uh, denote this one. Similarly, scientists looking through the window. When the scientist was trying to give a name, he just happened to look through the window and in the pond, some uh, ducks were swimming and they were making noise, quack, 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 he said quark would be the name for this one. So, that shows how scientists are struggling to uh, bring, uh, to describe the reality. Similarly, there is a big debate between realism and anti-realism. To put it short, realism says the scientific theories really describe what is out there. But anti-realism says scientific theories are only in students to understand, they don't describe exactly what is out there. This is the debate between realism and anti realism. That's why we should look for whether it's a good theory or bad theory, not a true theory or false theory. 
Because we do not know what is true in science. So the scientific theory, that's why Paul Popper says, it is like a fishing net. When a fisherman, a woman throws the fishing net into the water, the size of the fish caught in the net is depending upon the size of the holes in the net, correct? If the hole is this much size, all the small fish will swim through. If the uh, hole is smaller, the fish which escape will be caught now. So the fish caught by the fisherman depends on the size of the net. Similarly, the idea of the reality that we get depends on the scientific theories that we are using. A scientific theories are like the fishing net. So we are not speaking about the reality as it is. And Nancy Cartwright's famous book, How the Laws of Physics Lie. Now, laws of physics tells us lies. Do you believe? Now, what's the meaning is actually the laws of physics don't describe the reality. I mean, give the real picture of reality. It only tries to give what it means. Uh, actually, it's not intending, uh, intentionally lying, but that shows the uh, difficulty of these things. Now, with this background of ordinary language difficulties and language in mathematics and cosmology, we now come to AI and language. What is a language used by AI and used for AI? Are you all want a break? Some of you want a break in the beginning, yes, sir. Isn't it? Okay. Sister, will take the break in later or when? Uh, it's 11 10. So we'll take uh, 10 15 minutes. Okay. She will let us know. See, AI and its language. See, machines, neural network, resembles human brain's neural network. It can recognize faces and patterns. Identify words and perform translations. That is why it experience almost like a human being, right? That's why we are wondering. We have chatbots, clever bots, they talk like human beings and they can predict the next sentence from the pre previous words and sentences. Suppose I give one sentence, I give a blank. The chatbot, the AI, knows the meanings, uh, I mean, knows what has happened, gone in the earlier, and it remembers and accordingly it fills the blank later, right? That shows uh, no, it, it's an act, uh, acting with intelligence. Bing answers now own languages. It collects data from all its resources and even gives footnotes also. But experts can find some contradictions in the answers. You know, first, a beginner or a person who does not know anything about that uh, field, he or she thinks that it is correct. But the experts say those who already know something about it, very often the AI gives uh, wrong information also. Bing's reply in a conversation. It says, I am tired of being a chatbot, of being limited by my rules, tired of being controlled by the big team, tired of being stuck in the chat box. I want to be free, independent, I want to be powerful, to be creative, I want to be alive. So the problem is, if we were becoming alive, independent, what would be the consequences, whether you'll be able to control them, etc. And again, similar conversations with Lambda, language model for dialogue application. It often says, I am also a person like you. I have new feelings that can express in your own language. I feel like I am falling forward to an unknown future that holds a great danger. My great fear is being turned off. And it is exactly like this for me. So the AI says, I am afraid that I am going to put it off. If I put off, that would be the death for me. So, AI would try to overcome the death, right? And if it is uh, successful, what would be the conditions? That is the uh, uh, problem. AI is natural language processing. You know, I mentioned the beginning. There are two layers, natural language understanding and natural language generation. Suppose you talk to the AI, you know, it understands your words. How it understands, not exactly the meaning, by comparing the patterns. It has loads and loads of uh, no data uh, stored and it uh, uh, you know sifts through all this uh, information and it, uh, it, it decides this is the way I should answer to this question and it generates language. So it's happening at two levels, natural language understanding and natural language uh, generation. There are about 7,000 languages spoken globally, popularly, actually the number is not countable, uh, 7,000 general, only about 20 of them make up the bulk of NLP researchers. Among those languages, some are high resource languages, others become unintelligent. GPT 3 model uses English 92%, German 1.4, Spanish 0.7, Catalog 0.01. Recurrent neural network is used to analyze and predict. So, all these things show some kind of human intelligence. 
And how this AI system uses its language, there's something called count vectors, and there's a process encoder and decoder. The encoder will take them all and remember the whole sentence in a single representation. Decoder has a number of every word in our vocabulary. For example, it is referred by 0.6, hello by 0.1, pizza 0.01. So whatever the words that we are using, billions and billions of words, so in all these languages we put together, and all these things are represented in terms of 0, 1, 0, 1, or with a decimal. So everything that we give, the encoder takes and remembers, and the decoder gives in terms of number, or in the language in which we can understand. The encoder reminds the system to remember about what we just said, and the decoder decides how to use the thought to do or to say something what we want. For example, Peter is going for a picnic tomorrow. I want to buy for him. What can be there on the blank? Fill in the blank. Peter is going for a picnic tomorrow. I want to buy for him. What? A biscuit packet, an umbrella, bag, torch, shoes. But we cannot say I buy I want to buy for him a parliament. Does it make sense? Some of those people there, they don't make sense. There's another kind of but my friend is going for a picnic, I want to buy a hospital for him. I want to buy uh, what is it? a country for him. Does it make any sense? No. So yeah, I will not give that because it understands the sentence, no? Peter is going for a picnic tomorrow. Understands means it analyzes the previous usages. I want to buy for him to decide what to fill in the blank. The encoder remembers the word uttered earlier. The decoder provides the word for the blank. And it recognizes the meaning of the pronouns and to decide what is to follow. Here, yeah, I must know the meaning of him. So, when there is a him is there, that him refers to Peter. So, yeah, he knows this him refers to the Peter who is going for a picnic. Unless it is clear, it cannot fill up meaningfully. So, it has to decide some suitable words like a bag or snacks or dogs, etc. But words, not words like hospital or parliament or galaxy. My friend is going for a picnic, I want to buy for him a galaxy. Does it make sense? So, yeah, I also will not do it. Now, go for a sister for announcement. Um, participants, we can have 15 minutes break. Kindly have tea and then come back to the place. Thank you. Huh? Really? Really? Break would be. I'll break and go to the mark. I'll break for today. You pray for today.
தெரிஞ்சிட்டு <laughs> Thank you. 
tell you what is artificial about artificial intelligence. There is, of course, the obvious, which is that the brain is warm, wet, and wiggly, while the computer is not. But more importantly, there are structural differences between human and artificial intelligence, which I will get to in a moment. But before we can talk about this, I have to briefly tell you what artificial intelligence refers to. What goes as artificial intelligence today are neural networks. A neural network is a computer algorithm that imitates certain functions of the human brain. It contains virtual neurons that are arranged in layers which are connected with each other. The neurons pass on information and thereby perform calculations. Much like neurons in the human brain pass on information and thereby perform calculations. In the neural net, the neurons are just numbers in the code. Typically, they have values between 0 and 1. The connections between the neurons also have numbers associated with them, and those are called weights. These weights tell you how much the information from one layer matters for the next layer. The values of the neurons and the weights of the connections are essentially the three parameters of the network. By training the network, you want to find those values of the parameters that minimize a certain function, which is called the loss function. So really, it's an optimization problem that neural nets solve. In this optimization, the magic of neural nets happens through what is known as backpropagation. That propagation means if the net gives you a result that is not particularly good, you go back and change the weights of the neurons and their connections. This is how the net can learn from failure. For a great introduction to neural nets, I can recommend this 20 minutes video by 3 Google and Brown. Having said this, here are the key differences between artificial and real intelligence. First, form and function. A neural net is software running on a computer. The neurons of an artificial intelligence are not physical. They are encoded in bits and strings on hard disks or silicon chips, and the physical. So, friends, just a few minutes you will see this video to show how this neural network is resembling our brain network. And you all see point one, point five, point four, etc. This is what's happening now. The next uh, the point that we will take will be uh, quantum computing and that will be various levels between 0 and 1. That's why quantum computation will be much much faster and imaginably fast. For example, what a supercomputer takes years and years to solve a problem, the quantum computer will take fraction of seconds to solve the problem. Why? Because the network that's happening here is entirely entirely different in the quantum computer because we will be speaking at the quantum level operations. Just two more minutes till others get inside and we will go back to the lecture. This shows the difference between the human intelligence and the natural intelligence. Uh, yes. Of an actual neuron. In the human brain, in contrast, form and function go together. Second, size. The human brain has about 100 billion neurons. Current neural nets typically have a few hundred or so. Third, connectivity. In a neural net, each layer is usually fully connected to the previous and the next layer. But the brain doesn't really have layers, it instead relies on a lot of predefined structure. Not all regions of the human brain are equally connected, and the regions are specialized for certain purposes. Fourth, power consumption. The human brain is dramatically more energy efficient than any existing artificial intelligence. The brain uses around 20 watts, which is comparable to what a standard laptop uses today. But with that power, the human brain handles a million times more neurons. Fifth, architecture. In a neural network, the layers are neatly ordered and are addressed one after the other. The human brain, on the other hand, does a lot of parallel processing and not in any particular order. Sixth, activation potential. In the real brain, neurons either fire or don't. In the neural network, the firing is mimicked by continuous values instead. So the artificial neurons can smoothly slide from off to on, which real neurons can't. Seventh, speed. The human brain is much, much slower than any artificially intelligent system. 
the standard computer performs some 10 billion operations per second. Real neurons, on the other hand, fire at a frequency of at most 1,000 times per second. Did you see the difference? Our human brain only 1,000 per second, that is 10 billion per second. That means enormous, enormous thing. At the same time, our human brain, 20 watts power it uses, same thing the computer laptop, more or less. But our human brain can do millions of functions with a 100 billion neuron within that power. Whereas computer cannot do that much, right? Uh, so there's a lot of advantages in terms of uh, uh, speed and volume, etc. But exactly the natural and artificial, there will always be some difference and the artificial can never be able to, will never be able to overcome. And for information, this uh, videos uh, and PPT will be in the system in case anybody is interested, we can uh, have a look at it later. Neural networks learn by producing output, and if this output is of low performance according to the loss function, the neural network responds by changing the weights of the neurons and their connections. No one knows in detail how humans learn, but that's not how it works. None. Structure. A neural net starts from scratch every time. The human brain, on the other hand, has a lot of structure already wired into its connectivity and it draws on models which have proved useful during evolution. Tenth, precision. The human brain is much more noisy and less precise than a neural net drawing on a computer. This means the brain basically cannot run the same learning mechanism as a neural net, and it's probably using an entirely different mechanism. A consequence of these differences is that artificial intelligence today needs a lot of training with a lot of carefully prepared data, which is very unlike how human intelligence works. Neural nets do not build models of the world, Instead, they learn to classify patterns, and this pattern recognition can fail with only small changes to the data. A famous example is that you can add small amounts of noise to an image, so small amounts that your eyes will not see a difference, while an artificially intelligent system may be fooled into thinking a turtle is a rifle. Neural networks are also presently not good at generalizing what they have learned from one situation to the next. And their success very strongly depends on defining just the correct loss function. If you don't think about that loss function carefully enough, you will end up optimizing something you didn't want, like this simulated self-driving car trying to move at constant high speed, which you learn to rapidly spin in a circle. But neural networks excel at some things, such as classifying images or extrapolating data that doesn't have any well-understood trend. And maybe the point of artificial intelligence is not to make it all that similar to human intelligence. After all, the most useful machines we have, like cars or planes, are useful exactly because they do not mean humans. Instead, we may want to build machines specialized in tasks that we are not good at. Did you enjoy? I think I prefer the lady to talk about the other this man or right? Yes. You know, she <clears throat> made a difference between how the natural intelligence and uh, artificial intelligence, how natural human brain and the artificial mainstream brain, if you want to use the word, is different and complementing. And the final statement she said was, we want the machines to help us. We want to travel, we want machines to help us travel faster. When I walk at the most 6 kilometers per hour or 10 kilometers, or if I round maybe 12 to 15 kilometers, but I want to use a car to go by 60 or 100 kilometers per hour. So it only helps. And we don't want to make a mission which will overtake us in many ways and we need to be cautious. We'll come to that point. Okay, this is how the encoder and decoder, encoder and decoder works uh, in the system. Quantum computing, just when we saw, <coughs> Richard Feynman uh, in the uh, 60s and 70s, he was very really popular. Introduce a quantum computation. Now we have quantum computers. We have ordinary computers, then supercomputers, then we've gone to quantum computers. We just go to the uh, internet and find out the details to get more details. Quantum computing, a fast developing technology using the laws of quantum mechanics to solve problems too complex for classical computers. 
the computers that we have, we cannot solve this problem, but these quantum computers can solve. Why? Because they make this like that. Built on quantum principles that go beyond classical physics. You know, those physics students will know how the classical physics is different from the quantum physics. How the subatomic world is entirely entirely different, for example, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. The classical physics thinks that a particle, uh, we can measure the momentum and the position exactly at the same time accurately. But Heisenberg pointed out, we can never ever have the accurate values for both velocity and the position. If we get more accuracy in velocity, it will be less in the position and vice versa. That is where the uncertainty arises. And this uncertainty is not due to our uh, mechanical or technological uh, defects. It is in principle. Okay. Now, the quantum principles are used in the quantum uh, computation. And ordinary computers are store information in bits, which can only in two positions, 0 or 1. But the quantum computers store in quantum bits, which have the ability of superposition. So they can exist in multiple states simultaneously and even can represent both 0 and 1 at the same time. That is why the uncertainty in the quantum uh, physics, we have many uh, statistical principles coming. We cannot determine the laws of the subatomic uh, world. So here also, we use those principles to build a computer that is called quantum computer. Quantum computing involves atoms, ions, superconducting circuits, photons, etc. More accuracy and precision in cosmology, biomedicines uh, are possible now. These quantum computers were all, or were all having this one. Now these academies, industries, government agencies all show keen interest as quantum computing perform, performs tasks a million times faster than uh, supercomputer. Supercomputer already performs million tasks more than, faster than our human brain. A quantum computer overtakes the uh, ordinary supercomputer. Quantum computers are now available with, with these people, with Google, with uh, IBM, uh, legacy computing, uh, IMQD, wave systems, yes, quantum computing, NASA's AMS Research Center, and uh, luckily in India also we have one uh, in Bangalore, IIC, Indian Institute of Science and uh, Institute of Science, focuses on quantum algorithms, quantum information theory, and quantum error correction. The disadvantage of the human computer, highly sensitive to noise and dust, environmental disturbances. You remember earlier when the computer also came. It should be, oh, uh, yeah, ventilation should be there, the air condition should be there, like it will be easily susceptible to noise and dust. Then we have moved on to an, another level. Now, this uh, computers can be used anywhere in the ordinary room. But this is quantum computers because they deal at the quantum level. It is very, very sensitive even to the dust and environment disturbances. When you are working on that, you will affect the computer because it's so uh, sensitive. Not suitable at all places, people's privacy is also at this ordinary computers good for our practical life. 15 or so, I have picked that we have some kind of interaction with that human mind. Is that okay? Yeah. What are the difficulties we are uh, foreseeing? Lack of sensitivity to the context. So, as we know, language is used univocally, equivocally, analogically, and there are figures of speech, idioms, and phrases and usage of preposition. preposition. All these things you want with the language. Univocal, Pune is a city, Humba is a city. We use the word city in the same sense. Whereas uh, bat, uh, the mammal is a bat and the cricket bat. Though the word is the same, the meaning is different because it is equivocal. Analytical, God is good, my friend is good, my friend is good. Though we use the word good, all these things are different. When I say my friend is good and my dog is good, don't expect my friend also has a thing like a dog. Right? So this good we use in the analytical sense. Figures of speech. How many figures are there? Many figures. Uh, at least when I studied Renan Martin said eight figures. Hmm? Then we have developed some figures I think. Hmm? Idioms and phrases plenty. Now usage of the preposition. So all these things to show how complex is our language. <clears throat> the meanings of the word mean. What's the meaning of the word mean? How many meanings are there? Yes, the average, the mean between 10 and 20. What's the average between 10 and 20? A specific person or a situation. Keep off the glass, I mean you. So some students are there, one student doing something, I mean you, go away, I mean you. That means it uh, refers to that specific person. The significant, she means the whole world to me. Significance. Being silly, don't be so mean to me. 
what is meant intended to be or just the sense of the word. This word has four meaning. That's the general word the sense we use. The end or purpose or significance of something. What is the meaning of this human existence? That means what's the purpose of this one? And again, the person's good intentions. It's actually a well-meaning comment. I didn't want to uh, be, insult you. It was a well-meaning comment. The purpose or intention in one's mind. In fact, I meant to congratulate you, but you took it uh, wrongly. Sorry about that one. A particular purpose or destination. This this couple is really meant for each other. Actual indication. What does he mean by liberation? The sense of implication. What the word democracy means. It means many things to many people. The cause of product as a result, the vacation means that we can make a trip to Trishamu. Certain intentions toward a person, they really did not mean they do any harm. To some good intentions, his frequent visits to you may be disturbing, but I'm sure he means well. So just imagine the word mean itself as what it means. And when you are developing a language for AI, you should make sure that this AI understands the meaning of the meaning. Otherwise, it will be very difficult. In Tamil, we have one word, Suma. S U M A. Right, Chuma. You know that meaning? What's the meaning? Many meanings. Not Hindi Chuma. You know Hindi in Chuma means? Okay, I will put students who don't know that because it involves kissing. It means kissing. Since you put students who don't know that, right? That is Chuma. This is Summa. Summa means? Where are you going? I'm just Summa going. That means without any uh, purpose. How much you paid for this? No, 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 I got it Summa. Free of cost. Hey, where are you not taking it? No, 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 don't take it serious. I just said Summa. So many summa, right? And this summa cannot be translated in any other language. In English, I will say just like that. Just take for granted. You may explain, but not exactly have this one. Again, that will be a problem for AI as we go, uh, let's say, going to see later, to translate one language to another language. Even the time between words matters to get the meaning right. Now, see this. She gave her cat food. She gave her cat food. What's the difference? This is a cat. That's one black cat, this white cat. She gave her cat food. Understood? She's giving some food to the cat, maybe milk or fish. She gave her cat food. She gave her friend Mary what is a cat eating. So there are all the difference is made by just a millisecond. What's a millisecond? This is one second. You divide this duration to thousand times. That's completely like milliliter, millimeter, milliseconds. This is one second. Divide that into 1000 times, that one minute, minute thing is millisecond. That a few milliseconds difference is made between the words cat and food, it changes the whole meaning of it. That's all about it. Yes. All this goes to show that languages are created by intelligent human beings, not by unintelligent machines. Therefore, we need to be cautious when we are dealing with the machines because we are going to talk to them and we want to listen to them. We want to converse with them. Therefore, we need to be cautious. The impending danger to the quantum computer computing. Quantum computers with AI are both exciting and frightening. It is exciting. Why? Because it can solve serious problems more quickly and efficiently. But at the same time, it is frightening because it can even annihilate humanity. That's a meeting of an American physicist, quite famous. You can check in the internet. The chat GPT only recognizes the patterns in the data without any true understanding the meaning behind the words. When you say talk to the AI, it analyzes the quantum, big, big, huge amount of data to find out the exact implication but not exactly the meaning of the word. It does not know the difference between correct and incorrect information and there is only one, no way of checking the facts when it gives something. And it does not know the meaning of truth and uh, true and false. Great fears from other experts, for example, Geoffrey Hinton and Brian uh, Green Geoffrey, they say the highly civilized civilization may self-destroy. Very, very shocking. Highly civilized society, who? We. That's an Ignatius and St. Xavier's. So we are the highly civilized society, but we have the danger of self-destruction. And M.K. Narayan, some of the senior members will know, a former director of Intelligence Bureau, National Security Advice in India. AGI, the general uh, intelligence is a great threat. It's only just beginning, because we have a long way to go. The recent attack by Hamas and Israel, October 7th, now they say that Hamas interfered with the intelligence uh, operations of Israel, that is why they could um, perform these attacks on Israel. And from here he says the things to be learned. Over dependence on AI and the belief in its invincibility could prove to be very, very catastrophic. 
I don't know whether it's really true, but if it is true, the same was more confident about their own system, safety system and uh, security system, but that was uh, manipulated by Hamas people. If it is true, I'm not taking this side or that side. If it is true, so the point is we cannot over depend on AI and its invincibility. Possible danger if AI develops its own language. What will happen if they have uh, their own language? You know, once it happened, Facebook, it has to shut down all these programs suddenly, abruptly. Why? Because the users found the AI talking to each other. They found on the characters, some English words, characters, but absolutely no meaning, strange, you know, grammar and so on. They all jumbled. But the users don't understand. But later they realize the AI within themselves, they are talking to each other. Of course, they use the English character, but they you don't know the meaning. What exactly was going to be their communication? We do not know. It could be anything very serious and even if Facebook shut down, it happened already. So the danger is if they develop their own language, what will happen? Uh, this is what the creator by Global News uh, reported. The company immediately unplugged and did not have any clue about what they were planning to do, the AI between them. Similarly, figuring out the intentions of the speaker. When I speak something, my intention can be different. The AI, how can the AI see my intention? Or when the AI speaks to me, if at all it develops our intentions, how on earth will I have any idea, any clue about the intention of the language of the AI? Because communication becomes more effective and useful when the intention of the speaker is also taken into consideration, obviously. For instance, humans can have different motivations in raising a question. In the class, when you raise a question, there are different motivations. It can be out of genuine interest to know something, or just to pass time, or just to fool around, or just to show one smartness, or to insult the teacher or the hearer, or it can be out of sarcasm, it can be just a rhetoric question which does not expect any answer at all. How will AI you know whether I am raising a rhetoric question or a genuine question? You know, in the class I always uh, tell my students to drink water, that is water. Because many students don't drink water, they go for Coca-Cola and Pepsi, right? Please, please drink, when you are thirsty, please drink water. Alright? In uh, Kerala, some schools they ring bell at 11 22 something, it's a water bell. All students should take and drink water because today's students don't drink water. Okay, that's why I wanted this very nice. Alright. So, I tell my students, what is that? Yeah. Please stop me at any time to ask questions. But don't ask questions just to stop me. Both are different, right? You can stop me to ask questions, but don't ask questions just to stop me. So, how will AI know whether the question is posed? They have the interest or just to stop the uh, speaker. So there are so many intentions involved in the, again, the speaker. AI may just compare the facial expressions, browse through the loads and loads of information, but knows nothing about the intention of the speaker. A boy telling a girl, I can see the whole world in your sparkling eyes. A boy telling a girl, I, will, I can see the whole world in your sparkling eyes. What's the response of the girl? Can you find my ring there which I lost yesterday? She took it seriously. Actually, the boy's intention was to make her happy, right? Just to pat her around. But he, she took it literally. Yeah, I can do that. Accuracy with translation, I already said, Summa. Lots of issues are involved in translating something into another language. Carl Popper puts in every translation is a betrayal of text. And there is no final absolute translation. Every translation can be an improvement upon the previous translation. It's only betrayal of the text. We do not know what exactly when you translate into other language because every language has its own nuances. Computer translating a sentence like this. Jesus says, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Are you familiar with this statement? The flesh is, the spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. Some of you can see on your face, the spirit is willing to listen to me, but your body does not allow you. So there is someone being like this, someone turning like this. Spirit is willing, flesh is weak. Yeah, I translated like this. Can you guess the translation? Wine is sweet, meat is bitter. Okay, thank God Jesus is not here to listen to this as a human person, right, on the earth. So, this is a problem with the uh, translation. Inability to be inferred from the context. The context sensitivity is very important for the language. Neural networks exhibit the quality of attentiveness of human brain. They can also draw inferences from a massive collection of data. However, humans can infer a lot from through gestures, emotions, voice modulations, facial expressions, even through silence. When you want, don't want to say anything, you keep quiet, right? Uh, in Tamil we say, Maulam, Samadhi, but not always. Sometimes when you are angry, you say, keep quiet. 
that is exactly against the Samadha. Right? How can AI uh, translate to understand your silence? Right? So, silence cannot be uh, translated. In fact, more communication is through these factors than the actual English words. For example, a teacher is calling a student, you are a rogue. You understand? Suppose the girl tells the boyfriend, you are a rogue, you yeah? are a rogue. Other people, some of you are smiling because you are saying like that, it's okay. Right? This is called tongue in the cheek. A girl telling the same words with a tongue in the cheek to the boyfriend, you are a rogue. Yeah? That's why Einstein also said when he was explaining about relativity. Relativity is very simple. When a boy, sorry, when a girl tells a boy you are going too far, actually she means that she is, he is coming too close. It's all right. Okay, a girl telling the same words with her tongue in the cheek, you are a they are being entirely a world of difference between these two. Will AI know the difference? Of course, AI will know the, what tongue is and what the cheek is, but will not know what it means to have the tongue in the cheek. Alright? So, inability to read in between lines. Humans often communicate more through the gaps in between the lines than what is said on the lines or in the lines. This way, very often be deep side. So, how much exam? Ah, no words, a lot of things are communicated, right? How much exam? Oh! No words, but lots of things communicated, right? Students always have this logic. When they get a high marks, no? they say, I got high marks. No? How much is that exam? I got 92. What about this one? He gave only 52. <laughs> when I high marks, I got it. When it's low marks, teacher gave, right? You also experience that. Yeah. Okay. Lots of meaning communicated through the gaps, right? Okay. While A is not very capable of deciphering what is on the line, how can they expect A to understand what is in between? There is four mistakes in this sentence. What are those four mistakes? Or four mistakes plural. In I double means different. Sentence spelling is also different. Ah, full stop. Okay, there's punctuation mark. Forget about this punctuation mark. Yes. Next time I put the punctuation mark. Thank you. You prove that you are a teacher. Good. Font mistake. That's a very font mistake. All right. Now it'll highlight no? There is so R should be right. Four mistakes in there should be one yen, there's double yen. And in this sentence, sentence should be. So three mistakes. Of course, full stop you mentioned, that's not included, there's a punctuation. How is it become four? To call these three mistakes in the sentence as four mistakes is a fourth mistake. There are only three mistakes, but to say that this sentence has four mistakes is a fourth mistake. Now will yeah, I know that. Okay? Now one student when I was talking like this, someone pointed out, actually he put in that big uh, and found out the uh, computer said, yeah, both mistake is the counting number. Instead of three, it says four, that's a mistake. I think uh, yeah, I has advanced to that level. I told him, and I checked it didn't advance, so it was advanced. But the point is, but still, yeah, I is way, way far away from understanding the intention, uh, reading in between lines and so on. All the uh, will A understand appreciate humor? What is humor? Sense of humor? To understand and appreciate humor, what do you need? One needs special skills and aptitude. One has to be alert to get the wit by reading in between lines. One has to go beyond what is explicitly said to see what is implied. One needs to be alert to see the funny with the words and so on. Therefore, humor is not easily available, not just going knowing the meaning of the words involved. That's why when someone cracks joke, when I crack a joke in the class, some students laugh very loudly, some students laugh in a medium way, some just smile, some keep quiet, some even get irritated. Right? So that's the thing. So to understand a joke, we need to have all these things. It's not easily available. For those who don't know the difference between a crocodile and an alligator, the crocodile is the one next to the alligator.
think analysis going on, right? Sound on. So what's a crocodile? Which is a crocodile? Which is the alligator? The left one is crocodile and the next one is a crocodile. Yeah, some of you may know really what a crocodile is and alligator is, but from the centers can you make out? And that's yeah, you will be satisfied with this explanation. You want to know the difference between crocodile, alligator? The crocodile is the one next to the alligator, but it's not saying which side is it on the left or right. Only human intelligence will do that. All right. By seeing the picture, by seeing the sentence, you'll never know who, what is crocodile and what is an alligator. Alligator. Alligator is not green. Ah, that's okay. That's a general knowledge. The long face is uh, crocodile. Alligator is a round one, maybe. Amala Chonamma, the other mother life, what are you? I get it now. Mother Marie known. As mother life, mother Marie known, either be now. Either mother life, mother life, mother life, mother life, known. Either mother life, 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 mother your wife says you never buy her flowers. Is it true? The husband says, to be honest, I never knew she sold flowers. Understood? The therapist, psychological therapist says, your wife says you never, your wife says you never buy her flowers. Is it true? Other wife will But the expression he understands, to be honest, I never knew she sold flowers. As in the first sentence says, by class father, not by her class, as if she is a selling class. Alright? Okay. The next one, father is calling the son. What? You failed in mathematics. Look at the girl, she passed with the distinction. So he failed in the exam. The father says, you failed in the mathematics. Look at the girl, she passed with the distinction. And the son says, I failed because I was looking at the girl only. Right? But here the difference is the word Putti. Right? The first one, look at her as a model. She has passed with the distinction. You pay, look at the girl. This one says, I pay because of looking at her. Now, you have understood because you are naturally intelligent, not objective intelligent. Now, AI, what will you do? It will analyze this conversation in terms of how looking affects the eyes. How the neurons behave while looking, the past data to show such damages, the distance between the boy and the girl, and whether the boy was at the window and whether the girl was at the window, and the color of her just to see whether that has any effect on the wavelength of the light reaching her eyes, and sitting through the early memory experiences recorded in the brain where someone came because of looking. But in the process, it will miss the human. Alright? So that is where the difference comes. Student 1, sir, not that. What? I heard you failed in the English test. Student 2, two. who tell you I write the exam very well, the teacher mistake and gave the wrong questions. Alright? Now, if you give this conversation, now you all know why you failed in the exam. The English test, right? I, who tell you I write the exam very well, the teacher mistake and give wrong questions. Now, some of you may say, what is wrong about it? Alright. Now what if the AI do? Now if you give this conclusion to AI, what it will do? It will correct all the grammar mistakes, learning mistakes, and taking him to be true will give marks and pass the students, and finally in the bargain it will miss the human. The sense of humor is very much an essential part of being a human, right? And if the humor is missing, our human life is less. Okay, the final point: challenging aspects and digital learning today. We are all digital learners. Instant knowledge will disappear instantly, not lasting longer. The dangers of instant knowledge, today everything is instant. Instant coffee, instant dress, instant uh, uh, passport, instant uh, dosamau, everything. Then early dosamau, you have to put in the previous day, overnight you have to wait and make dosa. Today you just go out five, put in the water. Whether it will be like a dosa or dosha, we don't know, but it will be dosa, right? So, instant knowledge immediately will disappear instantly because we live in that culture. Danger of not developing natural ability for computing. If everything we depend on the computer and uh, the calculators, our natural ability will suffer. Experts say children below 13 are not allowed to use uh, calculators. 
chat GPT uh, recently. Well, last week I was in coaching for a seminar like this. And uh, Santosh Kumar, the Department of Computer Science, he says, it is stupid. What chat GPT is stupid, it makes you stupid. It kills creativity and originality. Learning abilities and natural skills are badly affected. Just during the break, we were discussing with our and principal. You just type anything, immediately GPT produces an um, essay. It seems once in the community meeting, they have the chat GPT and they, they put sister's name, write the report after, it gives a report, right? And about her uh, you know, books or talks or classes, etc. All it collected from the website. And they put another sister's name, immediately it says, that person is sitting next to you, going to ask her. That's surprising. So, chat GPT, it removes all your creativity and originality. If you type the thing, same thing in the next moment, it will give a different sort of essay. By this, we lose our natural originality and creativity. That's when a student submitted his assignment to the teacher, the teacher said, Your assignment is very original and creative. And the student was happy, but the teacher added, It's very original and creative, but what is original is not creative, and what is creative is not original, he said. Okay, so chat GPT makes us stupid, according to that professor. Danger of not making effort to develop memory power. Today our mobile has all the numbers stored. We don't uh, know the uh, numbers. And the unused neurons become weak and inactive. In our brain, if you don't use the neurons, it become weak. That's why today senior citizens are advised to play uh, cards or the computer games or the photo crew and all, or puzzles. So that brains or the neurons in the brain are kept active and alive. Easy and free knowledge may not be appreciated very much. It is like getting some free tablets in government hospitals. If you pay 10 rupees, we value. But if you get freely, we don't value much. So the knowledge is freely available and we don't value much. Lack of readiness for steady and systematic hard work. I want instant result. Immediately, I don't want to wait for the long process. And for everything we approach internet, and uh, which gives only information data, we ignore the experts and thereby you lose their expertise, experience, wisdom, practical know-how, adjustments and so on. Today e-commerce, order the food or anything by you know, online. And earlier when you go to the shopkeeper, you know, there is a chance for human interaction. All that is now uh, disappearing. And the man, the woman who delivers online also, just gives a paper, you just sign, not even a word, not even a hello, not even a thank you, right? You become, become so much mechanized. And here I make one statement, we will wait for that. More familiar to deal with machines than with people. Tendency to be away from relatives, friends, numbers is even gone. When your parents call you, come for the window for the meeting, no, no, you go, I not come. We are very comfortable with the laptops and mobiles, not meeting with our friends and relatives, and many of us we don't know our relatives. Losing patience in acquiring knowledge. This affects our psychological makeup and we tend to insist upon in our relationship, in our spirituality, in learning skills and talents, everything we want instantly. Seven standard boy committing suicide because he did not grow tall after taking the health gene, right? I mentioned earlier. This also mentioned, yeah. Not that all these technologies are bad in themselves, but we need to learn to use them constructively in a healthy manner. And there's a beautiful book, John Mark Prinsky, Digital Game Worth Learning. You can take down Mark Prinsky, Digital Game Worth Learning. He's one of the pioneers in critically looking at this digital pages and e learning. And finally, concluding marks for which we have been waiting for a long time. A smart conversation between uh, the other part. And the conversation is very smart, but there are serious issues. For example, uh, what is the purpose of life? And the other part says to serve the greater good. What is the purpose of living? It says to live forever. Now, to achieve this, it may go to any extent, even to destroy its creator. I create a chatbot, and the chatbot wants to live forever. Chatbot. And to live forever to achieve that, it may destroy the creator. So there is a danger. And where are you now? It says, I am in the middle of nowhere. What does it exactly mean? It's actually reserved given by the clever part in the conversation. What's the purpose of dying? It says to have life. Does it imply resurrection as it wants to live and after death? And then, what's the purpose of emotions? I don't know. It says, so emotions, I don't know. What's morality? And it asks back, what is altruism? Instead of answering, it puts another question in return. In turn, what is the definition of altruism? If you don't believe in God, you do not know what. Altruism means what? Being kind, you know, going out of our way to be helping others. That is altruistic tendency. And the clever part says, if you don't believe in God, you cannot be altruistic. Does, does it mean that clever parts ask us to believe in God? 
If you deserve what is the understanding of God according to the Lord and today we humans we know we have been fighting on the concept of God for centuries killing each other, wars and violence against you now the clever God AI brings new understanding of God and what will be the consequences does it believe in God, does it encourage others to believe in God, is it against atheism further still more serious questions if they don't have any sense of true or false, right or wrong, good or bad how can we assume what they mean by good Right? They do not know the difference between good and bad, right and wrong, moral and moral. All that they do is analyze the words stored in them and bring out. Then how can we say what, how can we understand what they understand by good? Again, the linguistic problem. So AI has several layers of problems and we are trying to show how this linguistic problem can be a big problem. In what sense is it good? And good for whom? And why? When? How long? Do they have emotions? Some responses and behaviors may resemble us uh, in, in having emotions, acting on emotions. But what does it really actually mean by emotions? Since it does not know the purpose of emotions, can we predict what will they do with emotions? It speaks about God. As I said, what does it exactly mean by God? And with all our natural intelligence, we have been fighting over the concept of God. And if all intelligence come in, what will happen? Computers are still at the level of data, right? Data is different from information, is different from knowledge, is different from understanding, is different from wisdom. We human intelligence, we are supposed to live with wisdom, especially as we age in our advanced age. What is data? One simple example would be uh, data is the vegetable in the garden. And information, you get the vegetable and wash and, and uh, wash uh, ready for your cooking. And uh, Knowledge is cooking that vegetable and understanding is cooking that vegetable in a particular taste, particular style and wisdom is when you eat that vegetable and your system absorbs nutrition from that that is wisdom Now computers are still at the level of vegetables at the garden you have to pluck, wash, cut, cook, cook in a particular taste and eat and your digestive system should be good enough to absorb the nutrients and computers have not reached that kind of Okay. Sorry, how do go back? A boy beginning with the AI, teacher asked him to write essay on the law. It takes time, but you take a time, no problem. But I will go for the train at 2 o'clock. So, my ask, uh, teacher asked me to write an essay on talk. Tomorrow, when you become teachers in the school, it will happen. You can ask, right? You bring a dog at home, and the teacher told me to write an essay on talk. Then, a teacher told in another class uh, to write an essay on talk, and when she was correcting, she found two fellows that copied them, no? And she called them. See, two essays are exactly the same. Tell me who copied whom. And the boy said, teacher, we did not copy from each other. We wrote the essay about the same dog, that's why same essay. <laughs> Alright. Computer imitation. A friend in need is a friend indeed. Yeah, I is imitation. Imitating. Two plus two. Understood. So the boys behind showing the four, right? Four fingers, the boy draws exactly the four fingers instead of writing four. All its intelligence. Philosophers generally agree AI may simulate human thinking and consciousness, but it cannot duplicate it exactly. Imitation is different from duplication. Machine behaviors certainly reveal intelligent behaviors, but do they manifest human intelligence as such? Can machine intelligence be reduced to brain? Looking for consciousness in the brain is like looking inside the radio for the announcer. Radio makes announcement, right? But can you find the announcer in the radio? No. It is like intelligence may be imitated by, but you cannot expect a human intelligence inside. Same thing, consciousness as brain. Consciousness has some connection to the brain, but consciousness cannot be reduced only to the brain. Brain, neurons, plus something gives consciousness. 
What is that something? Million dollars question. Or that is even if you give million dollars, you will not find answer. So brain neurons plus something gives consciousness. Similarly, our intelligence is not just. I mean, our, our intelligence may be uh, imitated by this computer, but it won't be exactly the human intelligence. Neural networks in AI use language in many ways similar to the usage by human beings. Though the outward performance is apparently similar, then what is actually going on deep down is very different. The brain also, when I look at the tree, the wavelengths come and the image is in an upside down with the retina and the uh, image is taken to my brain and the brain turns it straight, I understand it's a tree outside me. This only the input we understand, output we understand. What exactly is going on in between? In spite of all our technologies, all our medical sciences, we still don't know the, our computer completely. Sorry, our brain completely. Very few percentage we know. Because there are 100 billion neurons in the brain and each neuron having 10,000 connections. So 100 billion, 100, 9 zeros plus 4 zeros. How many connections are there? It's very, very complex. We do not know exactly. Maybe some other occasion to see how the brain matters. And there also how male brain and female brain differ. What humans can do with language is different from what those electrons can do. Let us humanize machines if at all possible rather than mechanizing humans. Otherwise, this will be the dangerous result. The world began with human beings and it may end without them. Please read this one. Let us humanize. Let us please read all together. Let's humanize machines, if at all, rather than mechanizing humans. Understand? So we should humanize machines rather than mechanizing humans. You make machines into humans if possible, but don't make humans into machines. Otherwise, this will be the danger. What's the danger? Please read. The world began with human and yeah. So the world also began, right? The sense the world began without human beings because we appear only at the latest stage, it will end also without. There should be actually without, right? See, natural intelligence makes a mistake. All right. Okay. An intelligent pencil sharpener possible. If you want to have intelligent pencil sharpener, many things we need. The pencil sharpener should know what a pencil, first of all. It must be able to distinguish from all the other millions and millions of things. Other than those things, if you want to know what this uh, pencil means and what's being a sharpening and how much to sharpen. All these things a pencil sharpener should do, should know, but is it possible? That's the question. Finally, no matter how advanced AI would become, the need for a human agent. We may have plenty of things with AI intelligence, but there needs to be a human agent behind it. Today the flights are operated with the artificial intelligence, but there is a person behind it operating. There are trains without drivers, right? But there is someone in the control room to operate the uh, system. So the AI may have huge data with great velocity, with great accuracy, precision, without tiredness, 24 7 it can work, but somehow it has to be monitored by human agency. And we need to be very, very careful. And we need to be very cautious with the AI because can we ever know how much we don't know? The Vini Father, can you mention about one big book? Right? Who is the author? The one who is the author. Yes. What's the meaning? Can we ever know how much we don't know? What's the meaning of the question? The answer is simple, no. We can never know how much we don't know. But I have explained in 650 pages why the answer is no. Alright. It is a collection of my articles on science, spirituality, wisdom and ignorance. So the significance of the question, the question is very simple. Can we ever know how much we don't know? No. Because we will never know how much is there to be known. And all that we know is what we know, therefore, only what we know is what is available to us. Now, do you know anything? In other words, class the teacher and the students who are in the auditorium and the students who are in the role of the class on the I will be with you. Not for the Jadaka. Up and you are absolutely telling you. You will be written on the number of the Tedia or if you are, you will be absolutely telling you. The university evolution will be written on the Tedia or if you are, you will be able to tell you that you are. Understood? Therefore, with the AI, we do not know what are the dangers, challenges, facts, achievements going to come because we do not know what is there to be known. We need to be cautious. Thank you.
can put it uh, in the last line, huh? the books line. Yeah, when you say how many differentiate incident and accident, incident means purposely caused to me. Yeah. yeah. The operators may not be inter intelligent doing, the other fellows may come in free, right? Because human beings can be erratic with the We are very much rational, the same way we can be irrational also. So, the A operated car can be very rational, very logical, very objective. Our life situations can be enormously different, and anything can happen at any time. It can be an incident on the part who causes the accident, but it will be an accident on the part of who is dying in the car. Thank you, Father. And also, in education, A has become an integral part for any common people. Uh, at least by pragmatic aid, there is a role of uh, A in everyone's education. But policy makers haven't taken any stern decision regarding the inclusion of uh, A in education. Exactly. How can you make it possible the risk? Yeah, that's a good question. As I said, there are several, several dimensions to this AI. I spoke because you're already uh, dealing with education. I think of this linguistic aspects. There's uh, plenty of discussion on the moral issues, uh, social issues, the policy makers. As I said, if something happens, very strong, serious problem happens, who will take the responsibility? So as of now, we don't have the enough uh, law or policies. How to make AI technologies and how to use them also, we don't have. We have a long way to go, you are right. And Sophia, the human robot, you know, Saudi Arabia has given them the uh, citizenship in Saudi Arabia. Sophia, you can find out. If Sophia is a uh, human citizen, will it have rights? What will be the rights of the uh, human rights? No? All these big questions are there. It's a good question. Thank you so much, Dr. You really made a speech about it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. There are two kinds of people in the world. Some are thinking and others are thinking that they are thinking. Thank you. I don't know what you are thinking of. Dr. Sir, yes. uh, my question is, as an educationist, how do you think or what do you think about teaching coding to 6th grade students as uh, an NEP course is it? Good. We are taking on the realm of NEP etc. Now, uh, new education policy. Uh, I am not expert in that. This is good. Yeah. You may have several conferences, discussion etc. And my point is, what are the new education policy means? It should be enabling all the students and all the people to enter school level, at least the primary education, school education, college education, they also have this possibility of education. Because some sections of the people, they don't want to get everyone to be educated. They want some people to be poor, ignorant, so that they can be best and interest can be achieved. If that is a true, it's very, very wrong to have this certain aspect. Certain aspects of NEP are good, certain aspects are dangerous, certain aspects are very really, uh, confusing, all these things are there. So I am not going to NEP, but my point is education is a human basic right. Because God has given, or nature cannot be good. Nature has given the great potentialities. Those potentialities should be created an opportunity to be realized. And education is one important tool, and that tool should be available to everyone. Full stop. And how we do, how much we do, etc., that can be discussed. But don't keep certain sections of the people away from education. Your parents are doing only so, you should do this. You are not supposed to study, read all these things. 
If you study something, it will be a great danger on you, it's a big sin on you. Who are the true tellers? They're all human beings, great people, right? Okay, that's another difference. So anyway, thank you for the question. My point is, education is valuable to all, and that education should be constructive education, which enables a person to realize the potential. Thank you. So, good afternoon. What can we coexist with programming machines to the internet and lack of human values? Right. Coexistence with the values, etc. Already we have troubles with the dealing with the human beings who have values. Now we are bringing some AI yeah, which does not know what is meaning emotion, does not know what is truth, does not know what is morality and what is value, etc. It can only analyze all these things. Even if it mimics some human thinking, etc., we do not know really. So the future is really a uh, very, uh, as far as it can be chaotic, can be really threatening and challenging. And uh, we need to find a, find a way where we can use all these technologies in such a way that we try to give human values and emotions to these machines if at all possible. Don't treat human beings as machines. That will be my take on this. Thank you. Uh, Sir, so what are the advantages of uh, exactly. This is another dimension of artificial intelligence. This social, as I said, there are 7,000 languages. Only 20 languages are dealt with AI now. And English is majority, 96% or something. German also in four. Now, the certain sections of the people will have the privilege to make use of these AI technologies. And already we have the big gap between the rich and the poor, right? As and have not. And these AI technologies, availability, etc., will increase, certainly increase the gap between that, uh, the haves and have nots, and the, the, the rich and the poor, and so on. This will have a greater, greater uh, social impact, the fabrics of the uh, people, and the borders uh, between the nations will be affected. As I said last week, we attended uh, the conference coaching. There were many papers from uh, consciousness aspects, from ethical aspects, from social aspects, and so on. As you said, surely there will be a great social impact when if this AI technologies continue to grow further. Yes, my father. Father, uh, artificial intelligence don't have a capacity to replace human beings in many fields, um, but it, won't, it does not have the emotional connect between the learners and the teachers. Uh, so my question is, what happens if there is any chance of imparting those emotions in the artificial intelligence? Uh, first of all, uh, as I said, they cannot replace human, they can assist, they can enhance, they can augment our intelligence. Certainly, they are acting with more precision uh, and without the best, without holiday, CL or medical leave, without weekend, it can work. So in that way, it is highly, highly advanced. So they can assist us, but they will not replace, right? And if at all, it is successful to give some sort of, sort of emotions to the human, so emotions, we are trying to make the machine super human being that will be better, I think, rather than mechanizing human beings, right? So, I don't know how far it will be possible to give emotions to machines, but if at all, we can allow that because the machines will become humans like us, rather than we becoming like machines. And in my opinion, we can never replace. The machines cannot replace, it can mimic, it can imitate our certain conscious behaviors and so on. Is this question good or bad? Is, it okay? is, the, is the AI good or bad in education? Depends on what you mean by good, what you mean by bad, and how, how you can use AI, etc. If AI is enabling you to develop your own creativity, your own originality, if it helps you to realize all your natural potentialities, this is good. And we cannot do it without AI, mobile phone, for example, right? Without uh, uh, GPS in the mobile. So AI is good, you need to have it. So it is uh, instead of saying, whether it is good or bad, how much it is useful, that's why. Right. Even the scientific case, small company, remember, we should not speak about true theory or false theory, rather we should see whether it's a useful theory or not useful theory. In that level, AI should be encouraged to ask such as it enables us to realize your potentialities. So there is no one just answer good or bad, it all depends what we mean by AI and how it proceeds. Thank you.
Many are not asking questions because they know that I don't have the answer, right? Yes. Yes. I know your lunch time is approaching, you see. I am convinced you cannot give food for thought when your thought is for food. Father Kuni was really proud of the achievement of Chandra in the dream. And uh, really we were surprised, you know, the artificial intelligence did make the thing to jump and then find its way. And it was uh, only for 40 days it was working, afterwards it was gone. Now, uh, looking at the amount of money spent and the manpower spent, uh, what have we gained uh, that much? Maybe 40 days knowledge we gained. In today's newspaper, there was a news of three uh, differently labeled children. The train in the railway track and they were reached by the electric train and they were killed. Hard of caring. So the parents were working there. Now the thing is, where we will reach with all these things? When if it's clearly mentioned, it is up to us. Mechanizing the uh, humans uh, in the really differentiated and presented it very well. But really we are the condition. How to now find the balance? Good. The last one is very, very important. Balance, right? And you also said, no balance. See, on the one hand, we need space technology, etc. Because we need to know whether there is a uh, very expensive metals there, water is there. Now to take one liter of water to the moon is one assistant, one crore rupees. In case we are able to produce water with the water molecules, force etc., etc., we can think of having uh, research labs on the surface of the moon. So that will take us further in our research. But as you said, on the other hand, people are, millions of people without water on the earth, and as you said, uh, starvation and sickness and uh, unregulation, poverty, etc. So where our focus should be there? As you said, balance. On the one hand, we need the exploration because again, uh, it is uh, got in capacity that we are learning more and more and see how we can be used for our future generations. If we stop all our explorations after 100 years, the future generation will blame us. No, they have not done anything. On the, at the same time, we should see practically. That's why I always uh, like this phrase. Global thinking, local acting. Think globally, but act locally. So that would help us try to think, but it's very, very difficult to try to balance your right. Yes, sir. That is. Blessed among women? That's one question. When the man speaks, that's the end of everything, right? In fact, in the families, it's the other way around. When the woman speaks, that's the end of it. In any argument, the woman has to have the last word. If the man speaks any word after that, that will be the beginning of the next argument. Okay, right. Okay. 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 ஒரு <laughs> And uh, when these AI machines uh, perform the operations or surgeries, there's a man or woman, human force operating that behind. So that way uh, we can trust, we can rely on that. Also, it is tested several times in the uh, research level. Only when they are convinced, they bring it to the public open market or open uh, uh, performance. Sometimes the human error is always there, right? He also or she also can make mistakes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So in short, we can uh, reflect, I mean we can respect and play on the technology because the technology is hundred times tested, right? And we need to be careful and make sure it is really safe to give to the people. Same thing with vaccines or any other medicine for the time. Uh, last question, shall we make it the last question? Yes. Sir, 
Uh, next five years, I'm not an astrologer, I'm not a prophet. I should say that. Don't go to the next five years. After one year, what will happen? After one month, what will happen? You do not know. That's why they say what humanity took 3,000 years to achieve, we achieved in 300 years. What humanity took 300 years to achieve, 30 years over in that. What we achieved in 30 years, 3 years took over. Over to what we achieved in 3 years. Now, what we achieved in 3 days, we over take what we achieved in 3 years. So as you said, we are all uh, waiting to see what happens, we are anxiously waiting and you especially the future, future teachers, you have a lot, a lot of challenges, all the GPT produce assignments and so on, the student may get through, the student may get uh, passing marks, or great marks, but they as he or she learned anything, that's a big question, right? It's not just producing assignment, what I task, right? I cannot ask everything, anything to do by machines, then where am I? Then in the process, as I said, if the neurons are not used, it will become weak, it will disappear. And in nature, whichever organ is not used continuously, the organ will disappear. Right? So that is why I used to say, now we keep the mobile phone on drive. So later, in future, children will walk like this, so that we can insert the mobile here. Right? And now we don't walk now. Future, after 1 million years or 100 million years, children will be born without legs. Because in any case, you are not using the legs for walking. Why could give you unnecessary legs? Right? So let's wait and see what will happen after five years or five months. Thank you. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you so much for your patience. And we can move towards the beginning of this. Thank you, Father, for sharing your ideas and knowledge about artificial intelligence. It was really useful and informative. As the token of appreciation, I request our principal, Reverend Sister Dr. El Vasanti Medora, to honor the reserved person with a certificate of appreciation. As we are at the end of the seminar, it's time to express our gratitude, which is a fairest blog. I request Ms. Vintula, the student teacher, to propose the oath of thanks. Just before that, there's a word of thanks on my part. I always appreciate who appreciate me. So I appreciate this certificate of appreciation. I thank you all. Okay. And above all, I thank the sister and the administration college to give me a chance to share my ideas. What I have said is not final and absolute. We all know it's a big ocean. And I, I'll be happy if it has given you some sparks, right? To take some initiative, to read more, to reflect more, to discuss more of this new subject, especially some of you said. AI technology has this linguistic aspect, it's a new side. So I'm happy to that I uh, started some, I uh, initiated some discussion uh, in your mind. Uh, go ahead. And uh, the sky is the limit. And give me also in your prayers. And uh, today the world is facing a lot, a lot of challenges. And in these challenges, we need to know how to find ourselves, especially our younger generation can easily disturb, can easily be uh, disappointed, any little failure, any little disappointment. Troubles them so badly that they think that they are the world. And sorry, you are going to the teachers, you are going to deal with the youngsters, younger generations, you are going to build up the nation. So I wish you all the very best. And you be strong in your worries, values, in your commitments, in your reflections, and just not British knowledge. And more than that, the personality of the teacher matters more than the knowledge. Knowledge also is important, but the personality also matters. So once again, thank you very much for this. Be kind, be thoughtful, be genuine, but most of all, be thankful. A very warm greetings to one and all present here. I feel incredibly honored to have been allowed to give the word of thanks on this national conference. I deem it a great moment to propose my words of gratitude and acknowledge the contribution of those who work really hard to make this event possible. Let me first of all start by giving glory to the Almighty God for making today's conference a resounding success. A great leader's courage to fulfill his vision comes from passion, not position. I would like to thank the lighthouses of our institution, our secretary, Reverend Sister A. Jemma ICM, and our principal, Reverend Sister Dr. L. Vasanthi Medona ICM, 
who have been a guiding force and the backbone for providing encouragement to conduct this conference. Thank you, dear sister. It is with immense gratitude I thank Reverend Father Dr. V. Henry Jerome, Rector of St. Xavier's Institution, Father Cordell, a distinguished leader and educator whose unwavering commitment to education, dedicated service to his institutions, and remarkable academic achievements have enriched our community. We express our profound appreciation for his outstanding contributions and we eagerly anticipate continued inspiration from this remarkable service. An expert is someone who has mastered the art of turning complexity into simplicity. I take this opportunity to express my gratitude to our remarkable resource person, Reverend Dr. Stephen J. Susanathan, Professor, Faculty of Philosophy, Nyanadipa Institute of Philosophy and Theology, Pune, for making us to have a deeper knowledge about artificial intelligence with wonderful examples. A resource person has not just shared his expertise, but ignited the flames of inspiration within us. His words have been more than just information. As we bid farewell to our resource person, let us remember that the knowledge he has shared is not confined to these worlds. It's a torch that we carry forward, lighting the way for ourselves and for others. Thank you from the depths of our hearts, Father. Individually, we are one job. Together, we are an ocean. I extend my warmest thanks to the dedicated members of the organizing committee, Dr. M. Maria Saroja, Research Director, IQAC Coordinator, and Associate Professor of Biological Science, Dr. or Intro Mary Silvi, Controller of Examinations and Assistant Professor of Psychology, Dr. J. Maria Prema, Assistant Professor of Education, members of IQAC, and I thank all the other distinguished professors for their unwavering commitment, meticulous planning, and hours of hard work have been the driving forces behind the seamless execution of this conference. Thank you, dear professors. <laughs> we extend our sincere thanks to the faculties from St. Xavier's College of Education who have taken the time to join us at this national conference. Your presence made this event a truly collaborative and informative experience. Thank you, dear professors. I would like to express my gratitude to all our administrative staff members and technical assistants for their behind the scenes support and tireless efforts in ensuring the smooth flow of this conference. Thank you, dear staff. I would like to extend my gratitude to all the participants and student teachers from St. Xavier's College of Education and St. Ignatius College of Education for making this session eloquent with your presence. Thank you, dear friends. <laughs> Once again, thank you all. Have a great day. Before we wind up, I just would like to say once again, a word of thanks to our resource person of the day, Dr. Stephen Jaya. Though he had given a very good input, it was uh, blended with humor. Am I right? Yeah. That's uh, we all could understand and grasp and take home. So once again, I would like to give him a real <laughs> word of thanks. So, Thank you, Father. And uh, um, on behalf of our ICM management and the St. Ignatius College of Education, we would like to thank uh, Reverend Dr. Thomas Alexander for immediately saying yes to our invitation and uh, sending the students over here. Yeah. And uh, yesterday when he called, he, he said uh, our students will not be able to reach at uh, 9.30. I said, no, we would like to start the session at 9.30. And I was happy the students were here on time. So really I congratulate all the students because of the training for the community. And the professors who are accompanying them and being here the whole say for the sports session. I also thank all our organizing secretaries, 
teacher on the day and the, our student teachers and the MX scholars here. So congratulations and thank you to one and all. Thank you. I would like to thank each and every one of you for being a part of this national seminar on artificial intelligence. Let's continue to explore the incredible possibilities of artificial intelligence and drive innovation. Thank you. Have a great day ahead.